Bill Hurst and his partners for a free consultation. Put experience on your side. Wish TV is your local weather station. What in the world will happen next? Well, my darlings, as the world turns, of course. But first, a special CBS News update. Good day, Dan Rather, with an update on the O.J. Simpson murder trial. Day two of testimony, the lead-off witness today was supposed to be longtime Simpson friend Ron Shipp. Shipp is a one-time um, USA football well, player and a retired Los Angeles police officer. Uh, he became an expert on spousal abuse, once counseled both O.J. Simpson and his then-wife, Nicole. Judge Lance Ito backed away from an earlier decision that would have allowed Shipp to testify about a conversation he allegedly had with O.J. Simpson after the murders of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman. According to the prosecution, Simpson told Shipp that he'd had a lot of dreams about killing Nicole. O.J. Simpson's lawyers now are fighting admission of that testimony, insisting the conversation never really happened. The judge is eager not to make a mistake that would open up some kind of appeal process, so he's reversed his field. He's now holding a hearing on whether the testimony about the dream is relevant to the murder charges against Simpson. Dan Rather, stay with this CBS station for the latest on the Simpson trial. That was just so dear of Judy to throw me that shower. <laughs> I was so surprised. I know you were. It was fun. <laughs> Do you realize it's after 3 o'clock? Shouldn't you be getting home? Yeah, you've got kind of a big date to get ready for tonight. Well, you know, it's number 7 for her. Maybe she could just do now, it Now, girls, now don't tease. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the last one, I promise. Eduardo's perfect man for me. <laughs> You'd better get home and get ready for him. Mm-hmm. Climb in that bubble bath. Call that masseuse you like mm. so much. No, I, I can't leave just yet. And why not? Because I have to see Kim try on her beautiful bridesmaid's dress. It's okay. I can take care of it. Please no, go no, home. No, come on, ladies. This is my wedding day, and everything has to be just perfect. I couldn't stand it if anything went wrong. your letter, Janice. What kind of game are you playing now? I thought you'd know by now that I don't play games. What the hell do you think you're doing? Writing letters to me at my home? What if Lily saw that? Uh, silly old me. I didn't even think of that. We wouldn't want to upset precious Lily, would we? Especially now that she's carrying your child. <laughs> You watch. Uh, 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 you better watch that temper of yours, Mr. Grimaldi. Because what I'm about to tell you will make you very, very angry. today by Pepto-Bismol. The one that coats is the only one you need. I don't care what you have to tell me, Janice. Ball. You're not going to get away from what you did. You're going to pay for it. You know what? I could really use a nail file. You don't happen to have one on you, do you? That's it. I'm leaving. Those scratches I gave you, they healed. 
Did you put antibiotic cream on them? You know, I read somewhere, human scratches are even more dangerous than animal ones. There's uh, uh, lots of little bacteria underneath the fingernails. <laughs> that leads to a nasty infection. I'm sorry I did that to you. I... Are you sorry you scratched me? What about what you did to Lily? And to our son, are you sorry about that? Uh, huh? More on that later. First, I want to share something with you. You see, your dear little wife, she's one of those women who, who put their best front forward for men, and they treat other women like dirt. I just, I really find that very hypocritical. And I think that women Who like cares that what you think, Janice? You poisoned a pregnant woman. Did you do an interview? You're sick. You're sick in your mind. You don't belong in jail. You belong in a hospital for criminally insane. Excuse me, Damien, but you really should have all the facts before you pass judgment. For the head of an international corporation, you really are incredibly gullible and naive. You buy into everything that smiling wife of yours says, but you don't know what she's really like or what she said and did to me. Treating me like I wasn't good enough to lick her boots. That's it, Janice. I don't know what's going on in the little sick mind of yours, but there's nothing Lily could have done that justifies what you did. I, I didn't do anything! Hey, did Lily tell you about when she came to see me? Because, um... She told me. You know, she told me that's why I'm here. I don't want you having any contact with either of us ever again. You act like this is so easy for me. Can't you see how humiliating this is for you to see me here? In this hell? <laughs> That's what Lily said to me, you know? She said she was glad I was in jail because she wanted me to be... How did she say that? She wanted me to be in my worst living hell. But I think there are a lot of hells, don't you? I'm not here to discuss philosophy with you, Janice. I'm here to let you know that my wife decided to testify against you in court. Uh, that's wonderful. Wonderful, that's what we all wanted. Lily, under oath. Lily having to tell the truth. Just hope her hand doesn't scorch the Bible when they swear her in. You're even sicker than I thought. What's the matter? You afraid to stay and hear the truth? Well, who knows? Maybe you want to read about it in the City Times. <laughs> Maybe you want to see it on the 5 o'clock news. What is the truth, Janice? I told Just you. tell me! I don't play games. And Lily is not going to win. And you want to know why? Because I have a little tale to tell. And it's about an evil princess and her gullible, handsome husband and their tiny little baby. You want to hear it or not? Are you okay? No, I, are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. What are you talking about? You're starting to worry me, Holden. I'm sorry. I just had to make sure that you were all right. Why wouldn't I be? I got a phone call about a half an hour ago. Somebody said that you were in danger, that Janice was going to hurt you. Who was it? I don't know. I didn't recognize the voice. Well, oh, Janice is in jail. Why, why didn't you just call me? You didn't have I to I did. Your mother-in-law hung up on me. What? Look, I don't know what is going on here, but this is highly reminiscent of the time you broke into the villa in Malta. Now, would you do me a favor and go? Now, wait. Wait a minute. You hung up on Holden? I even tried to call again, and she put the answering machine on. Look, it's probably nothing to worry about, but I just wanted to make sure you were all right. Lily is fine. Now, why don't you leave? <sighs> I'm sorry, I, I just... No. Excuse me? I don't want you to leave just yet. Jesse, I don't like this. Uh, would you do me a favor? Would you hand me that list? But this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just up and announce you're leaving Oakdale without to get yourself together, and you don't give anybody any reasons for it, and you won't talk to anybody about I'm gonna it. I'm going to need more boxes. Jesse, hello. You know hello. what? Would you do me a favor? Would you go to the post office for me and ask them to forward my mail? No, will you talk to me, please? 
What did Duncan do now? And I know the reason you're leaving is because he pulled another one of his stunts. I love you, my brother. You are always in my corner. So then I'm right. This is about Duncan. It is and it isn't. Would you stop talking in, in, in riddles? That you're driving me crazy, woman. You know, it's funny. We lawyers like everything nice and neat. You know, like this list I have. But unfortunately, in life, not everything is nice and neat. No, it isn't. And life didn't dump on you. Duncan did. He didn't dump on me. Oh, I think he made some mistakes, too, okay? But this isn't about him. It's about me. I'm tired of my head spinning around. I'm tired of being confused. Fine. But running away isn't going to solve anything. I'm not running away. I'll be back. I just need some time. I'll be back stronger than ever. You're still in love with the jerk, aren't you? You know, I didn't cancel the newspaper. I'm going to do that right now. I thought you'd be getting ready for Lisa's wedding. You think it's some deep-seated psychological thing, the reason that I'm not that interested in getting ready for these particular festivities? Would it have anything to do with the fact that I'm trying to, I don't know, avoid watching my mother marry some money-grubbing fraud with a ridiculous accent? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and ties to the underworld? That's probably not it. You know, Tom, your mother's a grown woman. She's going to do what she wants to do. Once Lisa gets something in her mind, there's no stopping her. Yeah, I know that. She's a grown woman, all right. I'll tell you what she's acting like, a two-year-old, running for a cliff, screaming, you can't tell me what to do. And I'm serious about this. Every time I bring up Eduardo, she doesn't want to talk to me. Well, you've some satisfaction that he signed that prenuptial agreement. That should give you some peace of mind, I reckon. Yeah, I suppose, I guess. I Tom, you know, the more you protest this marriage, the more Lisa's going to dig in her heels. You don't want to alienate her completely. She may need you later on. That sounded an awful lot like you don't want this marriage to happen any more than I do. Eduardo has always rubbed me the wrong way, and I'm convinced he's neck deep in that fiasco at Kingsley Malta. Well, that's reassuring. You just have to try and keep a lid on your feelings. Why? Because if you speak your mind, you'll give Eduardo an excuse to keep Lisa from her friends and relatives. And that will give him absolute control over her. So just go to the wedding like the dutiful son and see what happens. I am going to the wedding. You ask a lot, though. This guy has my mom flying so high right now. What's going to happen when reality sets in and sends my mom crashing back to Earth? Lisa. Lisa. Uh-huh. Could you come to the back for a second? Um, uh, why? Is something wrong? Uh, no, no. Kim has the dress on and she just would like to talk to you for a second. Does it fit? Yes, yes, it, it fits beautifully. Oh, I just think she'd like to talk to you about it. Well, no, I mean, if the dress fits, then there's nothing to talk about. I know, ask her to come out here, though, so I, I can see it in the light, okay? Okay. Kim, would you mind coming out here so Lisa can take a look at this in the light? Kim, that's so beautiful. That's just the way I dreamt it. Oh, <laughs> oh it's beautiful, darling. Just be turn around and give a little spin and uh, keep your head up. Oh, and open the parasols, all, by all means. Let's do the parasols. <laughs> yes, and, and remember, Kim, that you're going to be carrying a little basket of flowers, Oh, too. Lisa, yes. listen. Lisa, honey, oh, yes. this dress 
is lovely, but... <laughs> but what? Well, I, I'm just concerned that I'm going to overshadow the bride. Oh, fiddly dee. Barbara, let's puff up the sleeves. Oh, oh yes. make them a little, bigger. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got a what? pink suit. I know you would love it. It's a beautiful pink wool suit. Uh -huh. Okay. And we yeah. have to think about some accessories, too. Absolutely. Don't you think? It's a little understated, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Lisa, Lisa, like listen to me, honey. I would do anything in the world for you. You know <laughs> that. You're my best friend. And uh, the thing of it is, I can't help but feeling that this dress, mm -hmm. as lovely as it is, is not quite me. Oh, Kim, it is you. It is. <laughs> Did you see the look on her face? Did I tell you she's going to take it to Oh, me? you are so bad, you two. I can't believe you I two. Can't. I can't believe it. Oh, thank God, it's a joke. Here's <laughs> it. I'm looking for something simple and elegant for a oh, wedding. Perfect. <laughs> I, I think I'll try somewhere else. <laughs> it's my oh. latest design. I can imagine this, guys. I can't tell you. Oh, you're both so bad. I love it. I, know. I love it. I'm going to wear it everywhere I go. <laughs> you should. Oh, it's fabulous. Wait till Bob sees yeah. Janice the other day. You mean from jail? From jail, yes. <laughs> she, uh, she wanted to see me, so I went. What'd she want? Nothing. She just wanted to mouth off at me again. Huh. Seeing her. So much hatred. She's probably the one that called you. No, no, it was a man's voice. Well, then she hired somebody to do her dirty work. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not going to take this seriously. Maybe you should. I don't want to think about it. I, I can tell you, though, seeing her in jail, seeing those beady eyes looking at me, it's, it's kind of scary, you know, knowing somebody hates you that much. Excuse me. Yes? I'm, um, just about to go out. Would you tell Damien I left some messages on his desk and that the answering machine is on? Sure. I, um, I won't be very long. Take all the time you need. Don't you think you need a nap? Shouldn't you rest before the festivities tonight? I slept late this morning. I'll be fine. I'll see you later. <sighs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Barging it's like fine. This it's <sighs> what is it? It's just that I thought Arlena and I were making some progress, you know. And then she doesn't tell me that you called. She hangs up on you. Ugh. Well, in all fairness to Arlena, I probably did sound pretty crazy on the phone. It was probably reminiscent of old times. Well, I do have to say that it was a deja vu feeling hearing you banging on my door. You know, you probably shouldn't ignore that phone call. The papers did say that Janice attacked Kim Hughes, and you're telling me how much she hates you. She can't hurt me now. I mean, she gave it her best shot. What do you but... mean? Well, it's... It hasn't been the newspapers. Lucinda and Duncan have been trying to play it down. Play what down? Well, I guess it's all going to come out now that Tom is going to issue formal charges. Uh, Janice poisoned me. Me and Kim Hughes. What? Stop talking in riddles, Janice. There's no riddle here, Damien. This is about your wife. The princess. <laughs> I, on the other hand, was not and am not a princess. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I grew up on the right side of the tracks. Nice, nice little suburb. But I did not have all the advantages that Lily did. I did not have the privileged life with pots of money to buy me anything my little heart desired. <laughs> Unlike the princess, I did not have stables or swimming pools or tennis courts. <laughs> and I most certainly did not have a mother like Lucinda who understood what was really important. 
who could give me a real start in life. Instead of a fake Tudor split level and a timeshare condo in Hawaii. No. My mother was a dull, stupid woman who killed my father. What? It was a murder. <laughs> she didn't shoot him or put poison in his food. She just worked him to death. It was a slow, ugly murder. Poor daddy was never home. He was always working. Trying to make enough money, please that witch. He gave up his life for that stupid, selfish woman whose sole ambition was to join the country club and shop for better dresses. Where was I? Uh, uh, that's right. It was after Daddy died when we were living on cans of pork and beans that Mommy Dearest met hubby number two. That's where she met him. Yes, you're right. The country club. We didn't have enough to eat, but she held on to that stupid membership that my daddy died for. It paid off. Oh, yeah. Because hubby number two had plenty of money. But by then it was too late for poor little Janice to have ballet lessons. <laughs> you have to start early, you know that. And when I asked her if I could have writing lessons, she said no. She said, you never stick to anything. Well, that's not true. When I was in the fourth grade, I wrote a paper on my favorite book, Black Beauty. And that paper, it was 27 pages long. <laughs> Janice, you need to talk to a shrink, not me. No, wait, you can't go yet. I haven't told you the best part. Look, I'm sorry you had a rotten life. But none of that has anything to do with Lily or me. Oh, yes, it does. Because that baby that Princess Lily is carrying, it isn't yours. <laughs> it's Holden's. <laughs> That's what I wanted to tell you. And now, part two of As the World Turns. Sorry, really shouldn't talk about my mother. It makes me crazy. You are crazy. I'm leaving. Oh, wait. No, wait a minute. Come on. I didn't make up that stuff about Holden and Lily. I was at Cal and Connor's wedding, and I heard Holden and his sister talking about it. She's got Lily's number, too. Holden and his sister were arguing. They were talking about how Lily was playing the perfect wife after she slept with Holden. You watch it. Did you know? that Lily told Holden she was going to dump you and run off with him? I can remember everything Holden's sister said. I've gone over it so many times in my head, I practically have it memorized. She said uh, she was really burned up about what Holden was going through, that she hated to see the way Lily was flouncing around, having a high old time after she slept with Holden, and then dumped him to go back to you and play the loving wife again. You know... If you don't believe me, you can just call her and ask her. Her name is Meg. She lives in Texas. You're lying. No, I'm not. You're lying. I would be a fool to lie about something like this. You can check it too easily. And you know what? It makes perfect sense. See, I figure Lily changed her mind about Holden after she found out she was pregnant. She figured she could pawn off her little mistake as the Grimaldi heir, and so that she dumped Holden. Say. I wonder, did she kind of whisk you off to bed out of the blue? I mean, 
She had to play a little catch-up ball to make you think the baby was You're yours. Disgusting. Right? No. Lily is disgusting. It just made me sick to see the way Holden was defending her at the wedding. Poor stupid Holden. But isn't that just like Lily? To have her boyfriend defending her after she dumped him to go back to her very rich husband. I know you, Janice. You're making all this up to hurt Lily. I know you. Tell me make it up. No. Tell no, me you're lying. I'm not making it up. Lily's so hypocritical. You should have seen her at the studio. Oh, no, no, Janice. That isn't ethical. We don't do things like that at W-O-A-K. <laughs> oh, no, we do things like getting knocked up by our old Stop husband it. and trying to pawn the head off on our new dumb husband. I said shut up! Oh, oh, poor Damien, the truth hurts, doesn't it? From now on, whenever you look at that baby, you'll wonder if it's yours. I'm leaving. Guard! Guard! <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell Lily, I said, welcome to hell. <laughs> Why would Janice do something like this? Well, she did it to Kim because she wanted to host a pattern show. She did it to me because she wanted to do an interview. Wow. I knew Janice was ambitious, but to do something that desperate? She fooled a lot of people. The person I'm worried about the most is Andy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> he and Janice have gotten pretty close recently. He came by here to talk to me the day he found out the truth, and he was blaming himself. I tried to explain to him it's not his fault, but I don't think he bought it. Oh, I know how he feels to think that Janice and I... Sorry, Janice is probably the last name you want to hear. Well, it's odd. What? It's just... It's kind of a relief to know that she's responsible. Are you kidding me? If it were me, I'd want to kill her. Yeah. Well... When I found out that I was sick, I blamed myself. I thought it was, I thought it was me. I, that I couldn't carry a baby to term. That was my fault. But then to find out it was her, <laughs> that it was something from the outside, something that I know will never happen again, it, it just made me feel stronger. Does that make any sense? It's kind of the way you felt the other night, the stables. No, don't get me wrong, it was, it was horrible difficult but it's over it's finally over and there's nothing more that Janice can do to me I don't know when I have left so much. well yes it all started when I went to New York with Eduardo it's all his fault I left so much in there I thought it was going to just die Boy, what happened <laughs> well to begin with you know how I looked everywhere to find those little galaxy guardian things for the grandchildren? Uh -huh. I couldn't find them anywhere. Suddenly, this man barged into the hotel suite, and he looked like some kind of thug or something. I didn't know what he was going to do, mug me or who knows what. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it turns out he, he picked up these little toys, and he... Eduardo set him... Well, you know, Eduardo set, set him it, of up. Of course. Oh, he's the most <laughs> wonderful man in the world. <laughs> well, I suggest we make a toast. To wonderful futures for all of us. Oh, all right. And especially for you and Hal. I'll say. Mm hmm Yeah. However, whoever that is, tell them that we are closed. All right. Oh, Fashion's Barbara Ryan. No, I know. I gotta get home with No, her. no, Marco has already left. She's ready. Are you really on? Yes, she is. Hold well, on a second. I have to do something. Kim? Here. Right. Yeah, for you. Yes, who is it? He wouldn't give his name. Hello? Yeah? Um, Barbara, darling, it would please me more than anything in the world if you and Hal would come to Please the wedding. Listen please. to me. I don't want to discuss it right now. Honey, I really please. don't want to talk about it. What I want to do is I want to go home, spend some time with my children, get them tucked in, and oh. then come to your wedding. Oh, well, all right, but go right ahead. Don't worry. I'm going, all I have to do is turn off the lights. Oh, you don't mind closing up without no, me? Not at all. Thank I, you. I appreciate okay. it. Uh, listen, I, I've got to run. Oh, is everything all right? Yes, yes, everything's uh, fine. I just have to go do something. 
I'll see you at the wedding. You bet. And I'm going to get back at you for that oh, dress. Oh, no. I was afraid <laughs> of that. Oh, yes. Later. You Bye. don't mind closing up? No, darling, not okay. at all. You leave here and go home and get gorgeous. Oh, I will try. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, darling, it's important. It's very important. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts on my mom. I hope whatever it is you have up your sleeve is going to work. Well, listen, why don't you stick around and have a wee dram of Celtic courage before you go to the wedding? Well, I'd like to, but I got to go to the office. You know, with Jessica leaving it. What are you talking about? Forget it. Jessica leaving where? Nothing. Well, what do you mean? Where's she going? Say, no, 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 no. Where's she going? I can't discuss it. Is she going to be gone long? Is it she, business? She talked... What about my daughter? She talked to me in confidence, okay, Duncan? All I can say is... I'll see you at the Falcon Club. You got a blue duck. You color the duck. Go ahead. I can't. Why not? Sure you can. You call her the duck. I'll be right back. Okay. you want me to do um yeah if you could uh clean up the fridge for me that would be great <laughs> look you uh sure you don't want me to take it to the airport no i already called the cab it's on its way well i guess that's about it yes it's still not too late to change your mind sweetie could you give Mommy a hug? Mommy needs a hug right about now. She needs a hug really badly. Daddy. Yeah. I just hope I'm doing the right thing, Lisa. I thought we'd said all we had to say to each other. No, I have a little gift for you. A gift? Hmm. Is it ticking? <laughs> well, it's more for Lisa than for you. She does deserve a better husband, but I suppose you've managed to pull the wool over her eyes. If you're finished, I have a lot to do before the wedding. I've had a very difficult day. I've come to realize that Lily and Damien are under more stress than I realized. All right. Does that mean you're willing to back off and get out of his life? No, it means that I see you've been trying to undermine Damien's self-confidence. What are you talking about? Unlike some people, I believe in his abilities. I am not here to have a discussion. I have come to make a proposition. I would like you and your new bride to go for an extended honeymoon. Go around the world. My anonymous gift. Make you look... Uh, Rather better than you do. Less of a pauper marrying a wealthy widow. I'm surprised at you, Elena. You used to be more subtle. You used to be more realistic. You didn't go around spouting all this stuff about love and marriage being more important than a career. Uh, you really are threatened, aren't you? 
All I said was that I would protect Damien if you tried to control his life. I'm not threatened at all. I just want you to go. I don't want Damien to have to deal with the fact that you've tried to undermine his commitment to Kingsley Malta and to his family. Kingsley Malta is not his family, and nor are you. Lily and the baby are his family. I don't want to talk any more about Lily. I uh, would like you and your wife to go around the world. Now, either you accept my proposition, or I go and have a chat with your new bride about how your heroics were really murder. The choice is up to you. Oh, geez. I didn't mean to stay so long. I hope I didn't ruin your afternoon. Oh, no, not at all. Um, Lisa and Eduardo are, are getting married tonight, so I have to get ready for the wedding. Oh, well, give them my best. I will. Hey, you know, in all the excitement, uh, I didn't get a chance to tell you. This is some place. Be it ever so humble. <laughs> I hope that you'll be very happy here. I mean that. Thanks. I hope the same for you. How's Aaron? Oh, he's great. <laughs> Him and RJ, they get along really well. They're almost like brothers. Mm. Mm, brothers, brothers and sisters. And... Yeah, brothers and sisters. You always wanted a big family, didn't you? So did you. <sighs> you know, the other day I was helping this friend move some of his things into his place, and he found this old picture of us when we were kids. Oh. And I couldn't help wondering what I wanted to be when I grew up. Well, you once told me that you wanted to be a, a fireman one day and an astronaut the next mm -hmm. and a, a ball player the next. You were kind of uh, open to suggestions. Mm, it's very interesting. Nothing seems to have changed, though, so... It will. So nice to see you smile that way when you talk about RJ and Aaron. Nice to see you smile when you talk about your baby, too. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if we were both happy at the same time? Princess Lily's carrying. It isn't yours. It's Holden's. <laughs> Holden. What do you want? I want to see Jessica. Well, you're too late. She's gone. She left you this. Well, I'm waiting. I'll have to think about it. I can't give you an answer right now. Well, don't keep me waiting too long. Well, I know you're busy with your little wedding, so I'll give you a couple of days, but um, then I'll expect an answer. So, 
Well, I assumed you got my message. Yeah, I did. Good. Uh, I told you what I wanted for my wedding present. Did you bring it? Uh, Eduardo's prenuptial agreement, yeah. right? Thank you so much. I don't know if I did the right thing calling you up, but she seemed like, uh, well, you'll see for yourself. Sorry, I'll, I'll be fine. Okay. Janice. Mommy. Oh, I'm sorry you got that call, but I'm glad you came over and we talked. Me too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Oh, he just, <laughs> the baby just kicked. He must have gotten up from his nap. Oh. <laughs> wow. That must really be something. Oh, it is. <laughs> well, I should probably get going. Well, there's just one more thing. Uh... <laughs> yeah? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Get a free booklet on Campbell's Soup and a low-calorie diet. Check selected women's magazines and grocery stores. Whoever said girls are sugar and spice and everything nice? The woman is without a conscience. Doesn't know Jill. Meet her in a YNR Minute. Hallmark Hall of Fame presents the story of a brother and sister whose ancestors were sold for a piano. Their powerful legacy is the piano lesson. Sunday. Christie Brothers, Tuxedos by Raffinati. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns. This is CBS.